In this segment, we're going to take a look at using the Create Text tool, and that's found over here on the left-hand toolbar. So I guess to start off, I'll just click on the tool to get started. And the first thing you'll notice is that under the Tool Options menu, we get the ability to adjust our size. This is just a starting point. Of course, we can always visually adjust things later. But as a starting point, we'll go with 30, 30 millimeters tall. And then you need to choose a font. And if I grab my drop down menu, you'll see that I could choose from any number of fonts. These are the fonts that have been installed in my computer. In other words, they're the true type fonts in my computer. And any font that you can install, any true type font that you can install into your computer, will then appear in your Artistic Sewing Suite software and can be automatically created into embroidery quite easily. So again, I'll just scroll up. What if we just choose like Arial Black? And of course, I've got bold and italic as options. We can take a look at those in a minute. So what I need to do, I've got the tool selected. I've got the settings how I like them, is I have to click my mouse where I would like to start the text. So I'll just click there. And you'll see I get this flashing lettering prompt so that I know it's ready to start typing. And I can just go ahead and type in my name, Trevor. And then if I want to finish that object, what I need to do is just left click somewhere else, which basically finishes the word Trevor and actually starts a new lettering object. If I wanted to, I could, for example, left click right here and just type in my last name. So I've gone ahead and, again, I'll left click somewhere else. I've created two lettering objects. Now, if I was done creating lettering and I didn't want to create any additional lettering objects, I could just switch back to my select tool or any other tool and that lets go of that lettering tool. So what we did was we created two, two lettering objects. We've got the word Trevor. And notice when I select the word Trevor, I don't have in the tool options the ability to change the font or all of that sort of um, you know, bold and italic, and I guess we could change the size, but it's a little bit different. Because I guess before I show, um, I'm going to do a little tangent. These are, even though it's a lettering, it's still an embroidery object. And like any other embroidery object, I could use the rotate, um, rotation handles to rotate the word, or uh, maybe I'll put it back, or I could use the these handles to give it a slant. So like I said earlier, we always have that ability to visually adjust our lettering. However, if you want to still adjust some part of the lettering like um, the font, then what you need to do is select that lettering object and then click again on the letter edit lettering text tool. And what that does is it brings you back to the original sort of state where it doesn't have any stitches and it's just text editable text and at that point I could say well gee I didn't want to go with Arial Black maybe we'd like to go with the Bauhaus Heavy instead and so once I do that again left click to start somewhere else and it makes the change so if you needed to change the spelling or you wanted to add something or you forgot to put a hyphen or whatever it is maybe you want to make it all capitals I could select the word Conquer Good then click on the text tool and that brings me back to the fonts we could go ahead and choose you know a new font um, I could go in move the prompt see it's right there at the end I could put the prompt in here and say well conquer and then maybe it's conquer dash good which is not how you spell my last name but whatever this is the type of editing that I it's got the capability of making so again if I want to be finished I can just click here to put a lettering prompt for somewhere else that will let go of the word conquer dash good and what I can do now is um, let go of the lettering prompt by just clicking on the select tool or something else now one of the things that's very um, important with lettering is the ability to adjust the letter spacing and the way you would do that is first of all you would select your lettering object and then what you would do is you would choose the edit shape node tool and when I turn that Edit Shape Node tool, and I'm going to zoom in closely, you'll see that every letter has a handle. And I can actually click on that handle, and I can move that handle and the letter to anywhere I want. Not just to edit the space, but I could edit their position as well, which may or may not be a good idea. Um, if you really want to move letters, and you want to make sure that they stay along the baseline, 
you can use the control key because as we learned in the past when you hold your control key down and you go to use this tool it gives me that radius that allows me to um, move those letters along sticking to the baseline um, doesn't mean I can't move them but it's gonna stick to one of those lines just like it did before now this is something interesting is I still had the letter G selected when I selected the letter O and that's why I'm able to move them both together and that's easy to do basically if you hold the control key down and then click on several letters now I can move those letters like as a group so um, I'll do that all over so first of all let's just start over select the text tool choose a font and I'll just keep choosing different fonts um, let's look for something different here like maybe this curls something fancy start up a prompt and type in a r t i s t i c artistic and then I'll guess left click somewhere else to start the text and you can see here we've got the word artistic and again if I wanted to um, adjust any part of that word first of all I just select it then I step on the lettering handle again and that gives me the original handles and I could then maybe add to it space whoops I didn't mean to do that um, undo didn't want to do that I didn't mean to I lost my text when I did that so what I wanted to do was click on highlight the word go to the text tool again and then start hit the space bar and go artistic sewing whatever we could keep typing and when I'm done um, it creates the embroidery now again about the change in the lettering spacing so if you select the word and then go to edit shape nodes that gives you a handle for each letter which you can then use to move these letters to be anywhere you want so if you want to make them kinda of a little bit funky and all up and down that's entirely up to you if you want to try and keep them stuck to the same baseline this fonts fairly forgiving when it comes to having a baseline I was using the control key so that when I slid my letters along they slid along that baseline and once again I have multiple letters selected so the idea here is you click on a letter to select it if you want to select multiple letters you just hold the control key down click on this one and this one and this one and now I have four letters selected and I could just move just those four letters so you have the ability to not only adjust the letter spacing but really adjust the, the, the appearance of the letters entirely now these are lettering objects and like any lettering object we have the same ability to modify it so when I converted this into that fat font the software decided gee maybe instead of a satin fill maybe these should be done as a parallel weave fill or a, a step fill but if I don't want that I can just select the word come to my object properties and say well I don't want step I'd like that to stay in satin stitch and here I can see there's some funny things that have happened it's probably due to the shape of the letters and so I could either one go ahead and add some angle lines to help it understand exactly how I want it to be stitched or I could go in and I could even use my divide tool and div create some divisions in these shapes so that the software knows exactly how I want them to stitch it and um, basically you can continue playing with your lettering like it was any embroidery object and same thing with um, for example I'll do the word conquer good if I wanted to add an outline to this right now just taking a look my default lettering comes in as white fill with no outline but while I have any embroidery object selected I could decide well maybe I want it to be a red fill not a white fill and maybe I want it to have an outline so maybe I want it to have a dark blue outline so I'll click on the dark blue outline and it added the outline in a satin stitch but it's quite fat it's covering up most of the letter maybe I'd rather have it be either one smaller so a one millimeter border or maybe even a smaller than that maybe like a point zero four millimeter border which would give me like a run line border to it so you have the ability to make these types of changes um, to your letters just as you do with any other embroidery object now continuing along looking at lettering because there really is a lot there's so much that you can do with lettering and it's very important because um, lettering is how we can customize our embroidery designs and perhaps it's somebody's corporate logo and and this is their business name and very important to them um, so another thing that I was going to show you is that we could not only um, adjust the letter spacing we could adjust the letter shape 
And the way we would do that, maybe perhaps what I'll do is just start a new lettering object for this, and I'll get a font that's not quite so fancy. So we'll go with, I guess, a font called David, and I'll just click my prompt down here, and I'll type my name in again. Trevor. Oh, see, and I finally, I must have pushed the cap locks. Yeah, so I'm going to put capital T, R E V O R. And when I left click again, it sets that in place. So there we have the word Trevor. Now, what if we thought, um, I'll move it over here and zoom in on it. What if we thought that the, somehow we wanted to adjust the shapes of the letters? Maybe this was meant to be matched to my business letterhead and everything was pretty close, but not quite. What you can do, um, because remember, if I go to edit shape nodes, all I get is the handle for each letter and not the, out, the ability to change the shapes. If I want to change the shapes, what I need to do is select the word. If I right click over top of it, I can choose a function called convert to curves. Now that I've used convert to curves, when I go to edit shape nodes, instead of getting handles where I can move the individual letters, I get the actual nodes that were used to create the letters, which I could therefore select and modify just like we did when I talked about anything to do with modern, um, sorry, editing shape nodes. I can move them, I can play with their arrows to adjust their curves, I could right click on the line and add a node, I could convert a node from a curve to a line. Um, so all of those types of things that you want, I could right click on a node and delete that node altogether if you wanted to. So if you felt that, gee, the letter E was getting a little small at the end and you just wanted to make it a little bigger, you can do that and you can adjust your shapes to be absolutely any shape. So really, the sky's the limit when it comes to lettering. And for example, right here, if you just decide, oh, there's a funny little stitch there I don't like, we can just grab our directions tool and draw a direction line across here like this, and it cleans that up. So, um, yeah, there's lots of tips and tricks I can show you, but I'm just trying to get through the basic functions of all of the tools, first of all. And so that was how we converted this word to curves. Um, another option that you have with lettering is to break it apart. So if I right click over top of it, we also have the option called break apart. And when I use that, so I'll go ahead now, what it does, and I'll just click off to let go of that word, is instead of having it as one lettering object, now it becomes, each letter becomes its own individual lettering object, which I could therefore um, modify in other ways, I guess, like just rotating an individual letter or whatever. So that's break apart. Now let me just consider what I have and haven't shown. We've talked about changing fonts. Um, changing the type of stitches, adding uh, outlines. Um, what I haven't shown yet is how you can fit your text to a curved path. In other words, um, everything's been so far just like on a straight line. So what we want to do is take a look at how we could change that. Now, uh, I'm gonna, again, I'm going to go to the text tool and I'm going to just start some text. So I, why not just pick a new font each time? So whatever, there's a new one. And we'll just put in the word, whatever, Trevor's good. So there's the word Trevor. Now what if we wanted to put the word Trevor on some sort of a curve? What I would actually need to do is draw that curve first of all. So maybe what I'll do is just grab my tool for drawing a line and then I'll draw a line here and then maybe a line up here like this and then maybe another line down here like this something well whatever there's a curve and I understand that that's an embroidery object and it's not what I want I wasn't looking for an embroidery object but what I wanted to do is use that embroidery object as my path now I can um, select both of these objects at the same time by clicking and dragging a box around them so therefore I've selected the um, line and the lettering. Now, if I right click over top of this, we have an option called Apply Path. And so what you can see is the word Trevor has become fit along that path. And now what I want, if I wanted to, I could let go, I'll click on that satin stitch line that I've made and just delete it. And it leaves the lettering along that path. If I select the word Trevor, you can see here, the path is still here. And yet, I, and I could even still 
edit that path if I wanted to. I could change the shape of the path to be, you know, whatever shape I wanted, just like I would in editing any shape nodes. So you have that ability to adjust your lettering along a path. So, okay, I've shown a lot of functionality about lettering, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to review my notes and see if there's anything I need to add to this segment. But as you can see, um, there's a lot to learn about embroidery lettering, and, and as always, your show help tool and clicking on lettering is going to uncover the different types of things like adding text, selecting text, changing font and size, um, editing text shape, text to on path and remove text from path. Well, I guess we didn't do remove text from a path, but basically it's going to be the opposite where we're just going to choose clear path. Maybe we'll go ahead and do that. So I'll select that text that's on a path, right click, and then, oh, it's down. My screen is in the way. Let's see if I can fix that by modifying the size of my screen. Clear path. Yeah, I just have my desktop set a little bit too small to fit the whole menu on. So clear path. And there's my word back to normal again. So that's a segment, a uh, good 15, 16 minutes learning about uh, the lettering tool. And I hope you enjoyed it. And you may have to review that one because there was a lot of different functionality that I just showed.